the camera just can't do these 3D cubes uh, justice. Somehow the camera is 2D and the cube is 3D and the effect of these cubes is just tremendous. There's a better uh, image capture or video of it at the end of this video, so please stay tuned to watch the end. Here's the uh, box that it came in. It's an iCube Smart Do-It-Yourself Kit. So the unboxing here, it had excellent instructions, uh, but you need to know a little besides what the instructions tell you. Um, so here's the diffuse LEDs. They're square LEDs. And if I had this to do over again, maybe if I do another one, I will definitely clean the legs of the LEDs with alcohol and maybe use flux. So there are the parts you get. Uh, there's a little part in there that allows you to program the uh, the the 8x8x8 eight 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 cube uh, after you have it built. But I wouldn't bother with that because the software is proprietary. And unless you really know how to hack into it, uh, you're going to have trouble with that software. And there's always the risk of malware. But anyway, they did an excellent job on the motherboard. If you look at this motherboard, you can see that um, the soldering job on all those uh, ICs and the MCU and all, all the components is just perfect because it looks like it was done with solder paste and baked. You know, not even not even with an air uh, uh, an air tool, a hot air gun. It looks like it was baked either on a plate or in an oven. So yeah, this is perfect. So I'm glad. One of the reasons I got this kit was because I definitely wanted it already to have all the electronics soldered together. Because my soldering, while pretty good, if you make even the slightest mistake and you go through the trouble of assembling 512 LEDs into the cube, it's going to be really hard to troubleshoot underneath the bottom of the cube. So I'm starting slow. I'm just doing two rows to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. And you can see I got the two rows to work. The, the cathodes are connected first. They go left to right or right to left. And the anodes go up and down on, on the... Um, on the jig. The the PCB board or the motherboard is also the jig on the other side. So now I'm in full production. I'm bending all the uh, cathodes and uh, those are going to get soldered together. If I had my druthers, I might do it differently because unless you solder these cathodes perfectly, there's going to be a little bump where uh, the solder is. And my, my soldering is definitely not perfect. And uh, that's going to make um, that, that stick that you use to bend over the anodes, that stick is going to be raised up a little too high in some spots. One workaround is to use a stick at an angle and just put the corner in under the, um, under the anode and bend it over. But you see how that stick bends, is used to bend over the anodes at the right height. So if the heights are different, you, you're going to come out with some less than perfect results. So there's my first, uh, my first 8x8 matrix panel. So now I've got like three of them. I took uh, from Friday evening until Monday afternoon to finish this project. This was President's Day on Monday. And uh, here I'm doing one complete panel all in one shot. So it comes out on the video. And this is about 32 uh, time lapse, 32x. So this is what they tell you to do to put them all in place at once. But if you really wanted to do a perfect job, you would do one at a time and bend over the um, the anode and the cathode perfectly and then solder them into the into place 
you know, from from the upper left across and then down. And uh, you could get them to come out perfect. Uh, so as it is, mine, mine is lined up pretty good. But, you know, there's a few millimeters off between some of the uh, LEDs when you look down the row. So uh, it looks a little crooked. And also, when I get to it in the video, I'll explain that I had a little trouble uh, with the final assembly. That they really should have emphasized a little more in the instructions. Although, had I followed the instructions exactly right, I might have done better. So there's how that stick is used. So it works pretty well, but, you know, but if you want perfection, I wouldn't use that stick. I would do it a different way. But as is, it took me about an hour and a half to do each panel. So there's 64 LEDs on a panel. That means 128 legs to solder together. So... All told, there's well over a thousand solder joints to make um, to do to do the uh, the eight panels. Also, you want them to be bent in place perfectly and not have any stress on them, because that can make it twist a little later on. Then you, you there is a nice one. Now I I have all eight of them done. And I'm just testing uh, a few of them here. Uh, I won't go through all eight of them, maybe four of them. And you can see how you could test the rows and columns. And they, they do give you uh, those two wires, the red and black wire, and a little spot to solder them onto. That's specifically the right voltage for um, testing the LEDs without stressing them or burning them out. So what's really important here that I would do differently if I had to do this again, and I may do another one, but maybe not this particular uh, version. But what what I would do differently is um, when you put that first panel on and you solder it, you have to solder all of them across. I just soldered the two ends because I thought I might need to adjust it. And I thought I had it straight, vertically straight up and down, but it was leaning forward a little bit. You'll see that it's leaning forward. And you'll see me struggle with that for, for a while here as I get on the other parts. So it never came out quite perfect. It was off by like a quarter inch more on the front, leaning at the top forward than at the bottom. But... Um, and it did twist a little on one side. When I went to do uh, the side with the with the cathodes, uh, with the anodes, where the anodes all get connected, the remaining anodes that are bent at a right angle, you see them there on the top of your screen. When when you go to do those, that that can stress it a little too. That can twist it a little too, if they don't match up exactly. So that goes back to the making of the panels on the uh, on on the jig or the motherboard. So here you're soldering in some uh, cross cross pieces of um, of wire. That's fairly thick wire that um, helps hold it together and make it stiff. So you can see me. I'm trying to bend it back. I, I tried using pliers. I tried resoldering. I, I just wish I had done that first one perfectly. So if you're going to do this, take care when you put the first one on to make it perfectly straight and solid. See me bending it, flexing it back a little bit again. Here I'm trying to bend it with pliers. So that made them a little crooked. Anyway... I mean, not just the way they lined up left and right, not just the way they lined up in a row, and you know, in the crosshatch um, pattern. So here's the finished product. This is a little better video. It has some nice patterns, and uh, it has some buttons that you can select different patterns. 
and uh, control it a little bit. So thanks for watching. Give me a like. Give me a rumble. Subscribe.